Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Wrath of the Righteous. This is the Elven Entanglement. Let's get into this. We've done all the setups, we've done all the lore. It's time to actually play the game. Let's do this! A couple little changes before I begin, though. One, I was talking to people on Board Game Geek, and they were encouraging me to be a bit more creative with my card use. Basically, I use allies simply to explore decks. I very rarely use them for anything else, and they've encouraging me to sort of experiment with actually using them for their abilities as, as well. Uh, basically, what they what they were trying to say is is that if I use their abilities more often and get into the habit of I, I can use and, and and explore or doing extra explores through my actual blessings and stuff, I can actually uh, get through the quest easier because you know when I do hit the hard tests i haven't got any gas it's an interesting idea i like i said i usually don't play that way i play dig the deck as quickly as possible is how i usually play but we'll give it a go and one of the things i'm going to do to do that is i'm going to use this ability a lot which is basically him moving around so alan is going to sort of bounce around all the locations slowly whittling them down while the other people dig and to do, but the thing is, this thing here, it has a random location when you move. So he's actually going to start at the watchtower. Okay, so there's that. Let's just set this as the last player. Also, I must have read this card like 50 million times, and I kept reading it and not, for some reason, missing the word summon and. I just kept missing those two things. I kept really reading it as if you do encounter a card with the animal trait, encounter the henchman carnivorous stump instead and without that word summon it's a big deal because there's completely different rules for how summoned cards work when you summon a card especially henchman cards the attempt to close the gate or whatever attempt to close the location that card text is ignored but because i kept reading this and somehow maybe through wishful thinking was not seeing the word summon, I thought it was actually being treated by this scenario as a natural draw. So that text could, you know, the closed location text could be used. And the reason why I thought that is because the Elven Entanglement is unusual in that most of the henchmen don't allow you to close the gate. So, so I thought that was like a, a sort of way to close gates that was added to this scenario only by fiddling with the words, the text words or whatever. But it's all mute because it does say summon. It says it right there in text. Right there, it says summon, S-U-M-M-O-N. So, <laughs> whatever. Okay, the point is carnivorous stump cannot close locations. Okay, let's get into this, yablamo. So, the first thing we're going to do is advance the blessing deck, obviously, and then draw a servitor because we are going to fight the fiendish tree. Because this thing says, instead of your first exploration on a turn, you may summon and encounter the henchman fiendish tree. If you defeat it, draw the cohort Vinced. And that is basically what we're going to be trying to do this whole game, is any time we don't have Vince in hand, we are going to fight the tree and hopefully get Vinced in hand. Now... Vince's text box here is actually wrong. Uh, you got to look at the FAQ. I talked about this in the law video, but basically, here we are. Basically, his text should say, when any character defeats a henchman from a location deck, return this card to the box to allow that character to automatically close that location. So I think Vince is the way to go. And it just says... It just says on this text, it just says on this text, when any character feats a henchman, it doesn't have, say anything about summoned henchmen. So if I defeat a stump, I can use Vince to close the location. So the goal is to have Vince in hand at all times. So we're going to kill this tree. Now, these trees are really annoying. They're immune to mental. They're immune to poison. If you have the fire trait, you get an extra D8, and they do two range combat damage. Now, 
This guy here, recharge this card to reduce combat damage, does not work with ranged. Okay, it's just standard combat damage. So we'll discard that. And now we have to do our combat. We're going to use our ridiculous improvised dinosaur, which is a D10 plus our strength, which is a, a D20 plus our strength. So that's a D10 and a D20. Plus we have the Sage's Journal, which is reveal to add a 1D4. So we have a much higher than 50% chance to beat this. We only need 13. So, oh, oh look at that. <laughs> Wow, that is not a bad roll. 26. So we do beat him. That means we get to draw Vince. And there he is. And we also have to have a second round of damage. So this thing here has to be buried. Because there's no way we can do a strength 20 check to put it back in our hand. This thing's put back in our hand because we only revealed it. So then we are discarding it like this. Then, at the end of the turn, we're going to do Dovan. Reveal this card to move at the end of your turn. So that's basically what we're doing. And we are going to move to here. Okay, and that's our turn. So let's draw another two cards. Ooh, beautiful frog. Okay, so this guy is a really annoying hand. He's got so much crap in it. Basically, these two cards are dead because now that we've got Earth Shaker, we're basically set for our weapons. Okay, so he is at the guard post, so he has to summon and encounter the corrupted soldier. Let's uh, do that. Bring out the soldier. So basically, the way the mod works is that you can put various cards you want to continually use in like a line along the top here. And clicking the servitor button that many times will draw from that spot. So to draw that, you right click on the servitor three times. If you click on it once, if you click on it with the left click, it'll just draw the, the demilling or whatever the, the current servitor is. Anyway, uh, this guy is very easy to beat. He's just a nine combat. You can get past him with charisma. Doesn't have anything fancy going on. He does have a, a weird damage thing, which I'll get to if we ever need it. But somehow I don't think we are going to need it because we get to roll a d12 plus one plus two d6s to roll a nine. So that should be very unlucky if we do not. I'm jinxing myself. Oh. So even rolling a 1, we still get 11. <laughs> so that's all good. Okay. So we've beaten the soldier because every single turn we have to fight a soldier. And then we do our explore. You blam! Short bow. That's a dexterity. Our dexterity is 6. You boing. 5. So we get that. And we have no way to continue our turn. If this guy draws to five. I'm actually going to discard one, two, three. Okay, four, five. Okay, let's advance the blessing deck. And, ooh, it's the fancy dragon skull. Okay, so let's draw, explore. Ah, oh, Tangle Trap. Excellent. So first explore out the gate, we have a Tangle Trap. Okay, reveal a weapon that has the slashing trait to add 1d4. So you boom, slashing. This is a sword with slashing, so we get 1d4. And now we need a strength 7. So we have a strength of 8. So we need seven to beat this. I don't want to risk losing this, so I'm going to spend a blessing, which gives me another D8. Come on. Okay, so that's a pass. Which means that we can now discard Vince to automatically close that location. 
so it's this one, the BAMO. So our first location is closed. Excellent. And that's the end of her turn. So let's draw a card. You boink. Okay, so now we have Anduin. And basically, what are we doing here? We, we need, we need another Fiendish Tree because we want to get Vince back. So Fiendish Tree comes out. We're going to discard Enchanted Fang from the ranged attack. And now we're going to do our attack. So we've got a hand crossbow which is range skill plus a d6. So ranged is d12 plus one plus a d6. We're also gonna put out our recruit, discard this card to add one to any combat check by a character at location. If proficient with weapons, recharge it instead. We are proficient in weapons. So let's recharge this to add one to our check. And our Blessing has not got the Corrupted trait, so we can't use Valorous. Okay, so let me think. Ah, oh, coffee. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't think that's a good enough. So we're going to spend another Blessing and get another D12. Let's roll this sucker. Come on. Bam. That's a pass. Okay, we have beat him again, which means we get another copy of Vince back in our hand. We also have to discard another monster. We're going to discard Valorous here, like so. And the reason we're going to get rid of this cohort is because she has this amazing ability. At the start of your turn, you may search your deck or discard pile for a cohort. It's very, very cool. And now we're going to do Larian. Put that out. Display this card to examine the top card of your location deck. So the next card is an exorcism kit. Okay, your bamo. Let's explore. Corrupted Crusaders Barrier. This is probably one of the best barriers in the set, as in like it's very easy. Before you act, draw a random ally from the box and display it next to the scenario. So let's grab a random ally. Oh, nice. I really like the Caravan Guard too, and he's hard to get because he's got a Diplomacy 8. Nice. Each character your location summons and encounters the Henchman Corrupted Soldier. The barrier is defeated or undefeated based solely on your encounter. If any Corrupted Soldiers were not defeated, banish the displayed ally. Otherwise, add it to hand. Basically, we have to fight a Corrupted Soldier, which, as you've seen already, is not really that difficult. Plus, we are playing a Nora, who is very powerful in the early sessions because these spells are super strong at the beginning of the game. So it's a D12 plus 2. We only need 9. Uh, and uh, she gets a plus 1 for our Arcane as well. So hopefully we are going to beat this. Booyah. So that's 17. So that is a win. Now we also get to roll her arcane one more time. We need a arcane six to recharge this spell. We get an 11. So that's fine. Boom. And question is, my, my, Automatic instinct is to use these allies to explore. Okay, this card here, it adds to melee or range combat check, which basically she doesn't have. So we're going to use him to explore. Yoink! Mercenary. Okay, nothing fancy there. We'll do a frigid blast on him. That is another win, and we'll 
do another arcane roll. This time we need a, a arcane six again. Okay, that's a fail, but we don't really care because uh, we don't really care because she, every time she casts a spell, she can recharge it from her graveyard anyway. Okay, I'm going to... I just can't bring myself not to do it. I'm going to explore again. Yoink. Animal Trainer. Wisdom, Survival, Charisma, or Diplomacy. We have... None of them. And it's a nine. So that's a fail. Okay. And finally, we have Kyara. Now, she is my worst character for combat. I really need to give her some pluses to her strength or something because she's very weak, you know. I, I, I probably... Sh I should have swapped her out for this orc who's also a healer but also has other awesome combat traits as well. Anyway, uh, let's do this. Your blammo. Ooh, okay. So this is a, a horse which has the animal trait, which means we actually get the carnivorous stump, which means because we have Vince, we should be able to close this location. I'm really worried that I'm doing this wrong. I guess I'll find out when this video is uploaded. I won't play the next turn until after it's uploaded. I might have to redo this turn. Okay, so basically we want to beat this stump so we can close this location as well. Because, remember, this guy says, when, a, when any character defeats a henchman from a location deck. Ooh, so from a location deck. I don't know. Does that mean it's not summoned? Oh, I don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this roll, but I'm not going to finish her turn. And I'm going to upload it and see what I'm told. <laughs> Or I might post a post on the geek. Okay, whatever. Let's do this. The point is we have a carnivorous stump, which is a combat 13, which is a ridiculous combat for us. We do have Celelia Bruta, so we can uh, recharge this card to add a 1d4, which isn't much at all, but every bit, every bit helps. We have a strength of 6. We have the Sword Breaker, which gives us a d4 minus 1. And that's basically useless. We also have the Blessing of Baphomet. The top, the card over here is corrupted though. So if the top card of the Blessing discard pile has a corrupted trait, discard this card to... Okay, so this corrupted trait on the Blessing of Baphomet it does not, is not really bad. Like some of them make you discard cards. You, in, in this case, you have to have a corrupted trait in the top of the blessing deck to uh, use the use the explore, but we don't. So we're going to go blessing. And this says, discard this card to add two dice to any check attempted during the first exploration. So that gives us another two D6s. Well, I think that gives us a pretty decent attempt at this. Because, uh, booyah. 13 just makes it. When you even, it does count. So, the question now is, can I actually discard this card or not? Can I can I close this location? I don't know. I'm going to have to look this up. Give me, give me a sec, see if it's been answered already. No, I don't know. I had a bit of a scare around the internet. It seems that people have been arguing over this uh, wording. I'm kind of leaning towards the idea that where it says from a location deck, that means that it has to be drawn from the deck and the stump isn't drawn from the deck. It's summoned. Technically it's summoned from the, uh, the vault, like the, the massive card pool. So I'm going to say we can't use Vince to close this location. So I'm just going to go with that for now. Okay, boom. So that's done. Let's... Uh, why did this guy not... Re oh, he's a... Yeah, that's a bug with the thing. So cohorts 
are not getting cleaned up. I'm going to have to change the discard button to also clean up cohorts. I just slid that under the under there because it got recharged. Okay, let's do a blessing of Thingo and draw another card. Ooh, Constitution Fortitude 4. We have Constitution 6. Yeah, blam. Three, that's a miss. And let's... Uh, Yeah, I don't really want to do another explore. I mean, I'd like to. It's just... Oh, let's do it. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do another explore just yet because this weapon's not very good. I want to get my mace. So I'm going to see if I can draw something good with the next draw. So let's go three, four, five, draw that into our hand. Okay. And that is our first round done. Sweet. Uh, did I not draw this hand? Or this hand? I've got to be more careful with drawing my hands at the end of the turn. Three, four, five, three, four, five, six. Ooh, and there's a fire blade. Awesome. That means we can get the fire stump killed again. Okay, so we did pretty well. We were able to close the cemetery pretty quickly. Oh, I'm a bit confused about that stump thing. I kind of lost my, my flow by doing a bit of a web surf in the middle of the game there. We're done. That's the end of the round one. I will see you guys next time.